Down and round she goes. It's a bull. Good morning. Hey, what's up, folks? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Take a look at today's stunning uh, video, uh, live video from the... Oh, that guy looks like he got ate up a little bit. See that right there? That is a mark of a predator. Uh, don't we all have marks like that on us at some point in our lives? Uh, no less. Looks like this guy survived that. Uh, but here, I'm not here to talk about fishing reports, although, gosh, maybe I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> so, uh, first off, let me move along out of here. This is the uh, live Deerfield Beach, Florida underwater cam. Uh, you can watch this anytime just by going to live Deerfield Beach Cam. This is like two cities up from where I am, uh, a couple miles. Uh, you can almost see the pier from uh, the beach here in Lauderdale by the Sea. So, let's get into spot metal prices. And before I start that, I would like to thank the couple that came in from uh, both Bowling Green, Kentucky yesterday. Uh, they came in with their daughter and said that they watched my videos. Um, I was very, thank you very much. I really appreciate you coming by and saying hello. Picked up a couple products himself and uh, it was very, very nice to meet you. I hope you had a good time here in Lauderdale by the Sea as well. It's a cute little town, as I said. Well, let's take a look at spot prices here. And uh, currently we're up a little bit. The coin set a bull. I'm going to say a bull. Uh, it looks obviously like a bull, so I'm going to just uh, uh, <clears throat> go with the flow here. Uh, currently, overnight markets 1811 to 1825. Uh, we're currently sitting up at that 1822 level. Uh, when I was up a little bit early, I quickly glanced at market. It looks like the uh, pre New York Open was the lower prices that were in that 1811, but it started to kind of go up from there. Uh, now, again, we're sitting in 1822. Uh, $25.10 silver right now. It's, it's sitting above that $25 mark. Uh, I have not seen it break below $25. Um, and I'm wondering if it will, but, you know, who cares if it does? It'll just provide, again, a couple more pennies that you can buy cheaper, hopefully. Uh, platinum below that $1,100 mark by 35 bucks too. Um, so I don't know what's going on with the platinum group. Palladium down a little bit, but we don't talk about palladium. Uh, again, 20, $25, uh, $25.08 to $25.29, so that's a pretty tight range there. Uh, silver was trading in last night. And as we all know, uh, equity markets got pretty hammered yesterday to some degree. I guess... Uh, uh, people are still into buying the dips because uh, things are back up a little bit today uh, from what I can see. Uh, let's talk about news real quick. I'll get into ZH here. And as you know, I like ZH because they provide different narratives. I don't like a single viewpoint narrative uh, that we get from corporate media. So if you're wondering why I look at ZH, it's because it comes from all different writers, all different sources, all different narratives. And me, as an intelligent individual, free individual like you, uh, I like to be able to pick and choose what I think is correct and true, not be told what's true. Um, <clears throat> and again, don't get me wrong, I listen to people that are experts. I just don't listen to talking heads and people that are experts with uh, uh, ulterior motives, should I say. Well, uh, looks like the Olympics, uh, again, why do we talk about news and things? Because black swan events, it kind of gives us an idea where our society is heading. And if you know where society is heading, uh, sometimes you can tell where the economy is heading. So if society is heading for the dumpers, you know, more than likely the economy is as well. Uh, but no less, we'll make this real short. I'm not here as uh, a news guy. I'm not here to, to read the news to you. But let's just take a look at ZH and see what's going on there. Uh, why gold remains a bit above 1800 That's by VBL. Uh, I went into that a little bit. Again, he talks about graphs and charts and things like that. Uh, you know, if it goes uh, above 1834, sell. If it goes, uh, again, I'm not a big chart guy, uh, although I think charts are important to let you know where you've been because sometimes that's important because if you know where you've been, you might know where you're going to some degree. Uh, however, it is not a guarantee at all. Uh, and if it was, uh, they wouldn't be sharing charts with us. They'd be multi-billionaires doing it on their own. Uh, Tokyo Olympic bubble compromise. Uh, I think the Olympics is pretty much going to be a, a not a event or a small event. Uh, so many things going wrong with it. Panic, Taco Bell and Starbucks warns about shortages. Uh, what does uh, Taco Bell and Starbucks have to do with precious metals? Well, <clears throat> Again, we've talked, you know, there, there are shortages across the board for everything, uh, not just silver. You know, one of the things that uh, they talk about is uh, silver shortages. There are silver shortages. There has been silver shortages 
prior to the 2020 closures. And if there's one thing I've been saying like a broken record over and over and over, uh, silver, I believe, is a lot rarer above ground and available type physical supply than people really believe it is. Um, I mean, you know, there, there's guys out there say there's plenty of silver. I hate this when this happens too. You get the people out there that argue, well, there's lots of silver. Then they show you a picture of some silver vault somewhere where silver is stored and uh, you'll see like blocks of thousand ounce bars. And that's like their proof that there's available silver out there, uh, <laughs> which is a joke really. Uh, that kind of visual proof is, uh, that kind of visual uh, uh, um, uh, you know, looking at uh, piles of silver bars and someone telling you, well, there's no shortage is uh, bullshit. Uh, no less, there is a shortage of silver out there. It was tough to get prior to 2020. And then, you know, if something is short and hard to get, and then all of a sudden the entire economy closes down, um, the places where, where your, this product is made uh, closes down, the places where this product is manufactured and mined is closed down. Um, the people that buy and sell it are basically closed down for almost a year. Again, you had shortages already and that happens. What happens? Uh, uh, there is a huge shortage of silver out there. I'm absolutely, well, hold on. I am absolutely certain, and let me uh, uh, make this caveat, it's my opinion and I'm certain that uh, there is huge shortages of physical metal out there. Um, and, you know, that doesn't mean that uh, uh, it's going to be like water on a desert, that you won't find any. There will be silver product out there. It will be available. But, however, the shortages out there, I think, are a lot greater than what they're leading us to believe. I think that manufacturing is short silver. Uh, and, and with physical uh, investment demand out there increasing that shortages, it's only going to get worse from here. But you know what, stackers? Keep putting the uh, pressure on them. Keep stacking. Buy these freaking dips when you can and, and keep stacking, you know. At, you know, add to their pain level as far as the uh, what they have to buy this stuff for. Uh, you know, remember, they can't make silver solder. They can't make a TV set with paper silver. Uh, they have to do it with real silver. So all you stackers out there, keep stacking silver, especially silver has two uses. It's uh, an investment type use. Uh, it is money. Uh, and it's also uh, used in uh, manufacturing very heavily, especially electronics. Uh, so keep stacking them silver bars. Take the opportunity to buy these dips and as buy as heavy, heavy as you can when you, when you see these dips. Um, again, good opportunities like it was this week. Uh, futures rebound from routers buy the dip. <laughs> Speaking of dips, buy the dip outweighs fear even as yield slides continue. I'll go figure. Um, quantitative easing, how the world got hooked on magic up money. There's always some good, cool articles to read on here. U.S. Air Force to launch Operation Pacific Iron in 2021. Uh, largest fleet of F-22s are going to just fly them right through the Indo-Pacific region. And that ought to frighten the Chinese into uh, 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 stopping what they're doing. <laughs> Uh, you know, I don't know who runs our diplomacy in the United States. So I'm not going to talk about other countries, but um, as far as diplomacy, I don't even think we we have a diplomatic office anymore. Is there any such thing as diplomacy in Washington D.C.? You know, the whole idea is to eliminate wars and and eliminate these situations and sit down with people and say, listen, you know, we don't want to get to this point where we're flying uh, F-22s over your country or we're both sitting on nuclear buttons. And I mean. <clears throat> And really, if you come right down to it, this is all about the military-industrial complex and bankers uh, who make a fortune off us fighting with each other. Uh, but I digress. This is a precious metal program. It's not a political program. Uh, leak. Uh, well, what does this have to do with precious metals? What well, jeepers, man. I mean, what other big uh, uh, black swan event? Oops, sorry. I dropped my coin. Uh, black swan event can you have than uh, uh, a war between superpowers? I mean, where does that go? Nowhere good, that's for sure, economically and you know, globally. Uh, so uh, these are things we need to watch out for, you know. And, and again, you got to ask yourself, you know, why? Uh, why are they doing this? Uh, leak exposes global abuse of cyber spying weapon to p target. P uh, we've seen this happen in Cuba. Uh, and if, I'll tell you a funny story, too, is uh, I have a good friend of mine, Alexander Stubbs, uh, uh, that uh, I was reading this story about Cuba. And again, I digress about precious metals, but I was reading a story about Cuba and these ultrasonic high pitched noises that they recorded and that they said that there were Russians or, or somebody was uh, shooting high, you know, high pitched sounds at uh, embassy workers in Cuba and making them sick. Uh, 
So I, I sent this article, I think I put, I put it out there, and my friend uh, uh, Alexander, who's a biologist, uh, listened to the video and come to find out, he, he made news about this too. Uh, he told him it wasn't a secret weapon, it was crickets <laughs> that they had recorded. This is for real folks. Uh, so uh, they had a hard time letting go of the cricket uh, uh, thing the government did, uh, whoever the newspapers or media did. Uh, but eventually they let go of the cricket thing, and now they're still saying that there's some kind of a, a weapon being used by people at the embassies. Yeah, very well may be true, but it wasn't the crickets, folks. Uh, <laughs> let me move along here. Uh, uh, mapping tyranny, where uh, vaccination is mandatory. Uh, nothing too much in precious metals here. Uh, I could talk about uh, politics and all this stuff all day long. This is not good. Um, this is what I have always kind of been concerned about is a, uh, a 70 to 80 percent rate, even a, uh, a 5 percent, 10 percent rate uh, frightens me. But you know, what we had uh, in 2020 was something with a 0.28 percent. Uh, my understanding um, from what I read, not a uh, high, and again, depends on what age group you're in. No less, this is the scary stuff right here. What they put us through, um, hmm, never mind, over the last one, I don't think it was uh, worth it, but uh, Evergrande stock, uh, half a million Chinese, blah, 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 blah. Uh, panic. <laughs> All right, I'm going to just move over to here. This is a really good article done by uh, Ted uh, Tur Ted Butler, Ted Turner. Sorry about that. Sorry about that, Ted. Uh, Butler Research. I think I'm going to subscribe to his newsletter. I, I, I know he's got a newsletter he puts out, and I think it's worthy of subscribing to. Ted is one of the guys out there. This gentleman right here, that mug, uh, is one of the guys out there that uh, alerted me and a lot of people. He's one of the first people I heard... Uh, with credibility, talking about how the markets are rigged, how the silver markets rigged, uh, how they do it specifically, who the players are. Ted Butler gets the credit for that out of all the people out there that I'm aware of. Ted Butler is the guy that uh, brought this up. A uh, good little article. I'm going to read it real quick. Um, and uh, he even calls it a short subject. So it is. Uh, again and again, uh, Ted says, I have stressed that silver has been suppressed in price for decades by the concentrated short position of the four and eight largest traders in comics futures. Many have come to accept this, but my findings do not have universal acceptance. That's too bad because all that matters in determining price. It's, it's all that matters in determining price, and of course it is. Uh, it would be better off if we were all on the same page. The big shorts have always been able to buy back the short positions that they added regularly, thanks to a steady supply of traders who readily sold out long positions on a rigged price sell-off. The big shorts were able to buy back enough their short positions to make it profitable. But starting a year ago, um, and let's see when this article was uh, uh, dated, uh, yeah, this year, 2021, about a year ago. Uh, starting a year ago, the silver price rigging scheme run by the big comic shorts, and it is a big price rigging scheme, folks, there's no doubt about that, uh, stopped working as it had for about uh, the prior three years and a half. The big shorts were unable to contain prices as silver and gold ran to multi-year highs, generating billions of dollars of losses in shorts. Remember that run from that $15, that teen area, up into the 25s where we're at right now, where it's been sitting pretty consistently? Well, there you go. There's your. Uh, that's the big losses right there. Uh, the fact, uh, again, I, I'm talking on my own here. I'm not reading what Ted's saying, but uh, the fact that uh, uh, there are still big short positions out there uh, just confuses me. Uh, but let's let's go on here. Uh, moreover, the former biggest short from 2000, uh, 2008 to 2020 is J.P. Morgan. Uh, again, everybody knows that. That's like even uh, uh, you know uh, uh, first graders know <laughs> in, in the stacking industry or in the stacking business. Or well, not in the stacking business, but in the stack. All the stackers, even the first grader stackers know that J.P. had huge port, uh, uh, short positions. However, some of them still repeat that, and that's not true, as Ted says here. Had eliminated its once uh, so JPM had, it, it had did get rid of its dominant short position in the Comex Silver and Gold. Uh, this left the other big shorts to twist in the wind. The important thing now is what happens to the when the big four Comex Silver shorts move to buy back their massive concentrated short positions on higher prices. Uh, it'll be a moment like no other in history on the silver market. Over the past 35 years, the big four shorts have only brought back short positions on lower, not higher prices. It'll be a change so radical it almost defies description. Up until now, the big four comic shorts have always been the short sellers of the last resort on every silver price rally. No one appointed them to this price rigging role. They just assumed it. Uh, well, that may not necessarily be true. Maybe uh, silver is a strategic metal that uh, governments want to purposely keep down, Ted. Uh, is that a possibility or maybe not so much with silver? I don't know. Uh, if the big four shorts merely stop adding to short positions on silver price rallies, that would be enough to cause the price to explode. 
Uh, and again, as we know, uh, we were talking about that in, the, in our uh, video a week or two ago, uh, that we were waiting to see what happened. And uh, it looks like the short positions even added to their short positions this time. Again, which confuses me and, and uh, probably confuses Ted as well. So uh, we're just going to see these prolonged short positions until we don't. Um, but let's take a look here. If they try to buy back short positions on higher prices, they will inflame the rally almost beyond description. So obviously they're not trying to buy back these positions. Uh, so who in the world will, will sell to satisfy the buying that will inev inevitably occur on higher prices, including potentially buying from big shorts? Once prices start to move up forcefully, new buying will kick in strongly. There has to be sellers for every buyer, and if you take the short sellers suddenly out of the equation, whom do you replace them with? I don't know. In an article of Bloomberg commented on the uh, developing shortages and just about everything, but of all the shortages, the only one which there is aggressive investment demand is silver. And why they don't talk about this even more, I don't know. I'm sure Ted feels the same way. So who in their right minds would be massively short an item in short supply with massive potential investment demand waiting in the wings? Bottom line, as long as there exists a constant, and again, that's the question, who? Uh, who do you folks think it is? Who, who would massively sort an item in short supply with massive potential investment weight you know uh, uh, buyers out there stackers stacking silver bars small investors big investors uh, who, who does that um, and, and Ted asked that genuinely with a question mark and I do as well get some ideas put it in comments down there folks uh, bottom line as long as there exists a concentrated short position in comics silver beyond what exists in any other commodity silver is a buy so silver is a great buy right now uh, and more and more the four uh, four and eight big comic shorts appear to be stuck unable to simply quit this concentrating shorting game so Ted brings this up here well, they, they can't just quit it uh, this is the only issue that matters in silver and gold and we will have a front row seat to the spectacle adding to their already excessive concentrated short positions only extends the manipulation and he's talking about uh, what we just had recently again a lot of people thought that maybe these uh, four big shorts would lessen their positions on the cot or uh, uh, just recently uh, they did not in fact they increased their positions which surprised a lot of people maybe not surprised probably didn't surprise ted uh, ted knows it all <laughs> so uh, adding to their already excessive concentrated short positions only extends the manipulation so by recently just adding and, and increasing those short positions recently uh, which surprised some people um, all they did is is uh, extend the manipulation and allows their shorts to pretend they are in control, as uh, Ted puts out there, which means that don't worry, folks. It's only a matter of time before it blows up in their faces. Uh, even though the losses can't be pretended away, and this is true, they can keep chasing that tail, uh, and they're never going to catch it. Uh, they're just going to lose more and more money until they close those positions entirely. And what happens then? Well, it should shoot up explosively to the upside. Uh, moving to, but again, I'm thinking silver has some strategic, it's a strategic metal. I don't care what anyone says. It's used in electronics. All of a sudden, if there's a huge shortage of uh, uh, silver available for electronics, that hurts the entire world. I mean, I can't see anything good coming out of that as far as uh, uh, um, inflation goes, the cost of product. Uh, but good for us silver buyers because who's sitting on all this silver? <laughs> you and I. Uh, moving to, to buy back would cause their losses to escalate sharply. Some s might argue that there, this has been the case for decades and still the manipulation goes on. Um, and that's the way I feel sometimes, but uh, um, I have a feeling it's going to blow up in their faces at some point. And there's a lot of truth in that, save for the one new factor, the growing evidence of physical shortage of silver. So, you know, when we're out there stacking and you've got uh, people out there, small investors, large investors that see through this uh, uh, bullshit and this nonsense. Uh, and there's a lot of people out there doing it. We're selling tons of silver. We've been doing it for years. Uh, I believe that there is truly an above ground sh uh, silver shortage out there and it's only going to get worse. Uh, however, you know, I don't think it ends well uh, as far as the uh, uh, price of the products that it, it's, it's going to cost more. You know, if silver solder costs double and triple uh, what goes into products, I don't know what that means uh, for the economy, but uh, no less silver is way too cheap. Um, the growing evidence of physical silver and uh, uh, shortage in silver. The combination of withdrawals in comics, silver inventories, increase in ETF, particularly SLV holdings, and the apparent lack of any significant quantities of leasable silver threatened to bring down the ongoing scam of the big eight comic shorts to an end. Um, and there we go, folks. Uh, Ted says it uh, better than anyone else out there, in my humble opinion. 
And let's move along to the other guys that talk about this all the time, GATA.org. Not too many new articles out here. Uh, Brazilian Central Bank buys 41.8 tons of gold to bolster reserves. As I have said over and over and over, um, you know, the central bank, central bank, here look, central bank. What's a central bank? Well, uh, they're bankers. <laughs> they're the bankers that control the world. Central banks, uh, why they're pumping out uh, fiat dollars and fiat currencies and ones and zeros, and, and now they're trying to come out with their own digital Fed coins or whatever you want to call them, digital central bank units. Um, uh, they're, they're stockpiling gold. Why is that? Why don't They don't want you stockpiling gold and silver, but they don't mind stockpiling gold. Uh, well, there's something that just doesn't fly right there, folks. You know, uh, so why are why, why is the Brazilian central bank putting 41.8 tons of gold to bolster the reserves? Uh, again, meanwhile, uh, they're pumping their citizens full of fiat, uh, uh, you know, worthless paper. Uh, hmm, think about that. What's your opinion? Put it in the uh, comment section. I'm happy to uh, read it tomorrow and let you know what my opinion is of your opinion. <laughs> Uh, UK reaffirms, we talked about this yesterday, uh, Guiado, whatever his name is, the uh, uh, puppet uh, president of Venezuela that the UK and United States tried to stick in as the uh, official president but failed to do so in whatever kind of coup you call that. Uh, but no less, uh, UK bank does not want to let go of that $1 billion worth of gold that they're holding uh, for Venezuela. And you know what? Maybe they don't have it. Maybe the reason UK is contesting so much giving Maduro back and Venezuela back their gold is because maybe they don't have it. Maybe if they had to return it, this would cost them a ton of money. Maybe even bankrupt the London pool. Who knows? There's something funky going on here, folks. Think about this. Uh, why are they protesting so much giving back a measly billion dollars worth of gold to uh, Venezuela? Um, there, it, it's more... It, it, there's probably more economically here going on than meets the eye, uh, as opposed to political. Uh, just my opinion. Let me know what your opinion is in comments. <laughs> Gosh, I like this comment thing. Uh, GATA dot uh, uh, Chairman uh, Murphy reviews uh, Failure of Basel Three. All right, we read that the other day, and again, if you watch my uh, uh, videos here, you know you probably read all this stuff before I have even talked about it. Hopefully. Well, that is really about it. Let's take a look at yesterday's video, Gold and Silver Price Report, Monkey Hammer Monday. We saw a Monkey Hammer Friday and a Monkey Hammer Monday. Two Monkey Hammers back-to-back, -back, which provided what? The opportunity to buy the friggin' dips, and I hope you did yesterday, folks. My friends from Kentucky that came and visited did. <laughs> and we get a, we had a lot of locals coming and buying medals yesterday, too. So um, a lot of people taking advantage of these dips when you see it, buying the physical stuff. Uh, just going to go over some comments from yesterday, uh, since I do have a little bit of time here. And I'd like to thank everybody for uh, watching and commenting. Um, oh, oh, Rainbird was first commenter out here. Thanks to Hope to Visit Florida one day. It's a great state. You're going to love it. Uh, Snook is a great fish to catch. Thanks for watching Tropical. Inspector Jason, good to see you. And, uh, yeah, as far as censorship and all that stuff... You know, yeah, I may not argue with that. Maybe I was just being a bit paranoid about uh, the videos, but it was really odd uh, that the uh, viewers, the viewership was so low on that. But I guess there's a lot of other explainable reasons, too, as well. Thanks for watching, uh, Jason. I appreciate it. Oh, nothing to be happy. Hammer time, buying time. Well, if, oh, nothing to be happy. Buying time, it just doesn't jive. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Oh, nothing to be happy. I uh, appreciate it. Zipper fix. Uh, yeah, I do voice my opinions yesterday. Uh, I was a little, again, I was probably getting a little paranoid that maybe my opinions were getting me a lower view count, but that's that's probably just paranoia. Uh, and again, I'm sure it's explainable for some reason. Well, maybe not. <laughs> Either way, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to just keep doing what I'm doing, uh, doing and having fun with it. That's the whole point, is that I'm having fun. And while I'm doing this, hopefully uh, people out there are learning from my skills of being a, uh, a dealer for their last 40-plus years. Uh, Gunnar Gunderson says the UK and US government sanctions in Venezuela are fairly close. Absolutely, they are. They're almost hand-in-hand. -hand. I'm sure we're working together, probably with the French as well. Uh, thanks for watching, Gunner. Chris Fetter says silver is the only metal still below 1980 prices. Absolutely underpriced. Why has it been underpriced? Because of these big short positions we just talked about uh, with Ted Butler. And uh, uh, it's, it's nonsense. The price should be so much higher. And at some point, we're going to wake up and we're going to see that happen for sure. I just know it. Uh, thanks for watching, Chris. Uh, Silver UFO, I made a comment on manipulation Friday, but it was uh, censored. Hmm, it is very interesting. You know, I don't know. I don't want to get. I don't want to go too far and have some people think, oh, he's conspiratorial nutcase. Uh, I'm, there's nothing con 
not nutty about being conspiratorial sometimes. Uh, some conspiracies turn out to be pr uh, true, and if they weren't conspiracies, no one would ever find out about them. Uh, so that's important, but uh, I don't want to be one of those guys that thinks that everyone's out to get them either. So, And you know what? I don't even care if someone's out to get me. I don't care if my views are 500. I'm enjoying this, and the few people that are making comments and watching seem to be enjoying it, so I'm cool with whatever I get. Uh, thanks for watching, Silver uh, UFO. Steve Stagg says, Monkey Hamill by the dips. Good for you, sir. 72 to 1 silver ratio. Oh, I haven't done the ratio in a while. Is it really 72 to 1? That's uh, kind of interesting. It was sitting around that 68. Looks like that ratio is going back up. That's pretty crazy. Uh, thanks for watching, Steve, and thanks for pointing out that ratio, too. I'll look into that today. Uh, Lucky Winner says, thanks for keeping your video short. <laughs> I don't know how to take that. Uh, appreciate you respect people's time. I know I just got a tendency to blab sometimes. I do apologize for that. Some days I blab, some days I don't. Uh, yesterday I wasn't in too much of a blabby mood. Uh, but no less, it's a nice thing about having a fast forward button. And I got to admit, I've done it in some videos too. You can fast forward me anytime. Uh, <laughs> thanks for watching, Lucky Win Winner. Uh, Linda, uh, thanks for your comments. Nice to see you watching. As in the 80s, it'll drop. Dollar value rose. First time junk bonds went negative. Uh, silver price 226 outside. Yeah, I saw that article. That was pretty interesting. Uh, uh, $226 um, is what it really should be per ounce. That's probably true uh, given, uh, <laughs> well, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, thanks for watching, Linda. Eddie says uh, censoring and paper hands are getting uh, out of silver. That thought PMs are getting rich scheme. A lot of people getting out of precious metals on uh, uh, WSS. Uh, that's not surprising to me because a lot of people on WSS uh, a lot of people in WSS were in there to get rich quick, uh, and and those people they they they'd never get rich quick. Uh, the get rich quick crowd you don't want them in your markets. They just come in temporarily. They you know they make they create a little stir, a little dust, and, and they make a lot of attention for themselves. So people think, oh well, that's that's the investors in that particular market. What a bunch of whack jobs. Uh, but but you know. Uh, the people that are leaving the, the silver stackers market and the WSS, uh, again, good riddance, good buy. They weren't meant there to be there very long anyway. In my opinion, uh, they were there just to get rich quick. And if you're in the precious metals to get rich quick, uh, then you're in the wrong market. You can make good money, but if you're in it to get rich quick, you're in the wrong market. Uh, precious metals is all about wealth preservation. Uh, thanks for watching. Eddie, uh, Boca Stacker, enjoy my viewpoints. Hey, thanks, Boca. I appreciate that. I grew up in Boca, actually. I wasn't born there, but I grew up in that area. Um, um, I like Boca. It's only a couple cities up from us. Get comfy with those F-bombs. We need them. Silver surf surfaces. I lost my glasses. Um, where can I buy one of those silver coins with the fins? <laughs> Pretty cool. Uh, Patrick, thanks for watching. D-Man, I appreciate you watching as well. And let me just kind of, David Potts, you too, sir. Um, <laughs> I'm making my sticker. Uh, thanks for honest, straightforward language. X Navy, go X Navy. You put it so I understand. Damn Skippy, I like that. I'm gonna start using it myself. Damn Skippy. Uh, thanks for watching, Dave. Joey from Seattle, free speech baby. Amen. Hear you there. Uh, Steve says the manipulation of the numbers count of some of the content providers I follow is stunning. Yeah, I think some people, you know, if you say something popular, unpopular, I think AI may put you down in the ranking a little bit. I'm not quite sure. Battleborn, thanks for watching. Good to see you there as well. Michael Matthews, Tree Climber, uh, and Robert Robert. Hey, uh, that's really about it. I'm going to kind of roll through this real quick because, again, I want to respect your time. <laughs> Best deals out there. Where's my sheet? Give me one second. Premiums on gold have come down dramatically. A lot of gold products are a lot cheaper than they were and getting more reasonable. That includes gold eagles. The prices are getting a little bit less. Um, getting more in line to what it should be. The best deal out there is still gold bars. And uh, uh, it seems to be uh, Krugerrands would be the next best deal out there. Uh, but premiums on, uh, on uh, gold have come down a lot, folks. There doesn't seem to be a shortage of gold products. Uh, uh, other than some American products that have been uh, not produced over the course of 2020, you know, with the mint being closed and everything. Uh, and not so much true with silver. It seems that, uh, uh, well, 90% has come down, I must admit. The, the spreads are like between 75 cents and 250 right now on the bid and ask on the wholesale level on, uh, on uh, 90%. So um, it does look like 90% is becoming more available. Uh, one ounce and 10 ounce bars, not so much. I mean, they're down about a half a buck on the wholesale end. Again, it looks like buck fifty to three bucks, a buck to three dollars on ten ounce bars. Uh, well, it, it is products becoming a little bit more available right now. So uh, the premiums are coming down on a lot of this stuff. And uh, it, again, with with these dips, it provides an opportunity to buy at a a much better price. 
Uh, I still recommend don't be spending more than uh, six dollars an ounce on uh, uh, any uh, silver items, uh, and it looks like you can get a lot of items closer to that 350 range, spot plus 350 and four, and hope maybe even cheaper if you meet the right local dealer. Uh, as far as uh, where to buy, hey, listen, I'm a local brick and mortar. I only deal uh, locally, so if you don't live in my immediate area, I recommend that you find someone that. Uh, a dealer that is in your immediate area, even if, you have to, even if you have to drive an hour or two, it's worth it. Um, as I say, you know, keep your money local, buy local, and a lot of local dealers like like myself, you know, I advertise that I will beat Atmax Bullion, SD Bullion, JM Bullion, their prices. They're the big online guys. I believe they're trustworthy. I don't think they're going anywhere. I have nothing bad to say about them. I think they're good companies. However, I can do a couple things. I can beat them in service. I can beat them in price. Uh, and uh, most small local dealers should be able to do that. Uh, so again, try to keep your business local if you can. Uh, if you can't, uh, I mean, it, well, I won't say if you can't, it, uh, there should be someone, even if you have to drive an hour or two within your state. Uh, and I know a lot of folks that buy online only say, well, you know, I don't feel like taking that drive. But remember this, you're going to have to develop a relationship with somebody on the ground that you can drive to when it comes time to sell this stuff. Even if it's not you, your kids, develop some relationship somewhere. Uh, because at some point, you are going to want to sell some of your precious metals. If it goes into bubble territory, you're going to want to sell some. So who are you going to sell it to? You don't want to ship it in the mail. Trust me on this. Well, that's really about it. I appreciate everyone watching, and uh, let's see what happens tomorrow. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. If you live in my area in South Florida, call me anytime at 954-493-8811, or just come in between the hours of 10 a.m. and 4 p.m., and we'll hook you up. Hey, thanks again for watching. Talk to you tomorrow, and have a great day. Bye now.